Greetings everyone, it's Charles and a very different video today because I've just acquired two plasma balls from eBay and I want to show you that you too can do uh, plasma experiments at home very cheaply. These were literally 10 bucks each from China. I literally had them 15 minutes and I've made some discoveries which you can replicate at home showing how our universe works based on these two plasma balls. It's just so exciting and and I can't overestimate the importance of this. Uh, you too can do home experimentation. It is very easy. It is very simple. Don't be afraid to be another Michael Faraday. The age of discovery is not over. The dorks at the universities have skewed everything towards gravity. And it is doesn't make any sense, as I'm going to prove in this video. We're going to prove how the universe really works in this simple video with two plasma balls. And these plasma streams, of course, would approximate the so-called electric Birkeland currents across the universe. I believe the ancient people knew about this. I believe the ancient people had a theory of this. I think the astrology, lining planets up, you create a sudden voltage between two sources. If I place this pen across here, we see suddenly it goes nuts and it wants to join up. If I place the pen across like this, the two sources again want to join up. This is particularly apparent when we use metal. It's much stronger. It goes absolutely nuts. The two sources join up. Now, how is this similar to a star? Now, we all know the Electric Universe people. They say that uh, there, there are these Birkeland currents, these plasma currents, which go across the universe. This is plasma, literally. We see it as white, blue, and red, the color of stars, a bit of yellow in there as well. I want you to look carefully at the center of the ball in the middle, and you will notice something. There are very dark spots, and then there are very bright spots, swirly spots. Does it remind you of the sun, perhaps? It is very much like the surface of the sun, an electrical organism, as it were. Now, I've made some uh, discoveries uh, immediately with these. Um, we join two together, they, they, the, the currents do want to connect, but they're not quite close enough. Um, we can approximate the Alpha Centauri or any star system with this. So essentially a star is a blob of metal in space. You take a blob of metal and the thing absolutely goes crazy, it goes nuts. Um, we can see how stars are powered. I put my finger here and, and I want you to look at that. What does that remind you of? Do you see a coronal discharge? Do you see a solar wind? It literally models, it is not a star, but it models a star, quite literally. And, and we see something quite extraordinary happening there at my finger. I add a second, and suddenly both stars are smaller. So two blobs of metal of equal size will probably produce a fainter star system. One blob dominant, a dominant blob of metal uh, in space, based on the electrical nature of the universe, will produce a giant star. But what if I replicate the Alpha Centauri system and add a third star some distance away? We call that Proxima Centauri. So we have Alpha A, Alpha B, they're slightly different size, different blobs of metal. I add a third system, a third star, Proxima Centauri. It, now, immediately, it doesn't matter where I put it, it's going to be much dimmer, but it's also going to be much more volatile. And this is what we see in Alpha Centauri. Um, if, if it's a much smaller blob of metal, especially, uh, we see it as tiny. And as I bring it closer, it actually gets brighter because it becomes part of the same coronal discharge. I bring it further away. Proxima Centauri is a, a very considerable distance away from the two stars of Alpha Centauri, our nearest star system, and it becomes exceptionally faint. Now, we have two bright stars in, in Alpha Centauri the size of our sun, uh, which are modeled by these two fingers here. And we have the third, uh, a much smaller piece of metal, so I'm pressing less hard, it's further away, and they're all running off the same current, essentially. And this one is, uh, Proxima is, is exceptionally faint. And you, you also see it's much more volatile. It literally flicks, it flickers on and off. I put these two there. At the Proxima, it, it flickers on and off. 
uh, as if it's hardly there. And, and you can barely see Proxima Centauri, but at times it will flare up dramatically. And I'm just reading on Wikipedia that Proxima Centauri is incredibly volatile. It is, uh, it is essentially when it does flare, it flares up uh, around 88% of its, 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 its uh, uh, peri perimeter. It, it's incredible. And so we see that modeled here. So essentially, the more stars you add, the more points of energy, the more magnets you add, the more piece of metal. It's especially strong with metal, which is what a star is. It goes nuts over metal and it makes its own pseudo-magnetic field. You see, it's, it's incredible, uh, showing that magnetic fields are photonic. But you add more stars, you get a, a weaker signal if they're of equal size for each star. You have a very large star like Betelgeuse and lots of little ones around it. You're going to have very strong signals. Now, this shows us, this model shows us that um, a dominant star will be, uh, will have a very strong continuous signal, whereas the small stars in the system will tend to flare up more readily and, and disappear. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that that is actually what astronomy shows. It shows that what uh, dwarf stars, stars which are more distant or stars which are smaller, if they are close to dominant partners, will be more volatile by far and will flare up uh, quite considerably. Now, all this shows that we have some quite interesting things happening in the universe. The people at the universities and at Wikipedia, refuse to acknowledge this utterly, but we can, I've just modeled a lot of what is happening in the universe. Even between two star systems, I can link these up with a piece of metal. And I can use a, a I can use a better, a, a better piece of metal, a key ring. And we see uh, what is essentially modeled by a galactic supercluster, which is, uh, we have a, we have strings between clusters which look like neurons in, in the universe. Now, uh, those who have been following my Facebook know I'm building a laboratory. I'm going to do lots of experiments, much more complicated than this. I've literally had these balls for 10 minutes, and I've, I've seen these insights. I've seen that the electric universe is a true theory. I think the ancient people believed in electric universe because electric universe and the alignments of the planets allow a, an influx of photonic energy or whatever the energy is into the solar system. Different alignments would dissipate that energy, changing how the sun works, changing how the internal sun of the Earth is operating. Um, we're making huge discoveries here in this electric universe field, and you can do it, you too can do it at home. I'm going to do other experiments, contra rotate these with electric drills. You can put batteries in these. I've heard about this, and I've heard that the, the streams go together. We could make a Saturn ring effect. Uh, let's cross the streams literally and see what happens. I'll get a few more of these. I'm going to do much more high-tech experiments, more, more complicated and involved. I'm going to measure the voltages. We're going to see what happens, and it's going to be absolutely extraordinary. I invite you to join me on this voyage of discovery. Do subscribe if you're interested, and we will continue making the Ancient Mystery videos. We will continue making these videos. Uh, we all know the Electric Universe people are very much into Ancient Mysteries themselves. Electric Universe explains a lot of Ancient Mysteries as well. Cheers and have a great day. Do subscribe. That really helps out the channel. Although this channel is a hobby, it's not a living, it's a hobby. But, you know, I wouldn't mind a big channel. That would be very nice indeed. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Well, hello. A very important and very serious note. Uh, do help me out on Patreon because, um, you know, I've got all these pressing bills, you know. I really appreciate your support, all my Patreons. Uh, for example, um, just, to, just to list them off, uh, I don't want to bore you or anything, but my dog's psychologist... Uh, my dog has been having some awful nightmares lately, uh, waking up howling. Um, my budgery guards podiatrist, my, my budgie has, has not been singing up to his usual high falluting standards, uh, operatic standards, so I, I sent him to a podiatrist. I thought maybe he has sore feet. Uh, in addition, um, a dendrochronologist for that very big gum tree I cut down outside. I'll have firewood for a long time, but the, the council is annoying me So uh, for that. So there we go, guys. It goes to a worthy cause. And on a more serious note, I really do appreciate your support and help uh, to all my patrons. There we go. Thank you for your attention in this most serious and pressing matter.